So you want to make your very own wall hack in Python? Then this video is for you. I will show you the exact steps to draw ESP boxes that show enemies through walls. And our drawing method will be the same for other games. You will just need to adjust the memory logic. Let's jump right into it. Before we draw anything, we need to know where our enemy's coordinates are. They are somewhere in the game's memory, called the entity list. The first thing we will do is to open Sheet Onion. Now remember, my game is running in dash insecure mode, which means I will not be vac banned, and you should do the same. We will search for an entity's health points. Now in Counter-Strike, they have 100 points of health. In your game it might be different, you might not know. If that's the case, you can use unknown initial value. We then hurt the enemy, search for a decreased value. We repeat these steps, shoot the enemy or hurt them, search for decreased, and look for changes. Once you have a low amount of addresses, we will start to check what accesses these addresses. We will look for instructions that are not that complicated and also from the module that we want. So for example, I don't want any server modules, we want the client only. We can see some very odd looking instructions here, but when we go down the list, we can see one that has a very specific instruction when they take damage and it's from the client module. You can probably use server modules, but for Counter-Strike, it's pretty, pretty bad, Tom. I don't recommend it. So, once you have found a good looking address, we will pointer scan for it. We will choose a low amount of offsets as the maximum. If you don't have any results, you can go higher. If we click the offset one column, we will order the list by offsets. And we can see that we have some pointers with only one offset. If we check out these top two and remove their offsets from the pointer and check the memory region and then dissect the data slash structure. Here we can see that it leads to a pointer to an entity. Perfect, but only see one. We have more entities. Subtracting some hex like 50 and then taking a look again. Now we can see that we have our three entities. Perfect. We can see that they are 20 in hex in between and we just need to remember where it starts. Then travel through it using our steps. Let's quickly pull out the calculator, go to the programmer section and calculate our actual entity list base address. We will take the address, subtract and there we have it. Let's note it for later. We can now begin to look for our view matrix. So this view matrix is a 4x4 matrix somewhere in the game's memory. Not for all games, but for most games. And we can find this by searching for 1 aiming up and minus 1 looking at the ground. The reason for this is because we have values in that view matrix that correspond to the camera in game. So if we aim up, one of these values will be 1. If we aim down, it will be minus 1. It's not more complicated than that. So we will continue, search 1, search minus 1, and when we have a low amount of addresses, we will take a closer look at them. So now we have a couple of hundred addresses, but I want to look for the view matrix anyways. We can see the green addresses, they are static, which means they probably don't change if we restart the game, and that's the case often with view matrices. So we can take a look at the engine module addresses at first, and see if there is a matrix there. What we will do is to browse the memory region and change the type to a float. We will resize the window so that we see four columns and then look for something that resembles a 4x4 matrix, literally. So we will scroll, realign it, and just look for something that looks like 16 floats in a 4x4 manner. Just pick something that changes when you change the camera in game. You can pick several. It doesn't have to be per perfect or the, the exact view matrix at first. Just pick some of them and you can go through them later. At the very end, I found something that res resembles a view matrix. We can see a 4x4 column and row structure. We can see the values change when we move our camera in game and it doesn't spaz us out that much. So we will note this address as a potential view matrix 
and we can begin to code our wall hack. <laughs> we will create a new folder and add three Python files. One main wallhack.py, then overlay.py, and finally calculations.py. The first thing we will do is to use the cmd and pip install our packages that we will use. So we have pymem, we have pygame, and other packages. We can now write our imports and initialize our script. We will set a screen size, and is 1080p. You will have to type your screen size here. We then initialize pymem using our wanted process. Since mine is Counter-Strike Source, I will look in Sheet Engine and just write the process name there. Now to use the pointers that we had from Sheet Engine or the base addresses, we will need to use the pymem.process.module from name to gather the client.dll and the engine.dll. We can then write out the pointers using our client base and engine base to get the entity list and the view matrix. I will write the view matrix later once I have tested it, but this is where you would write your view matrix address. Now for our wall hack slash ESP loop, we will loop while true, then go through 24 entities. We will get the current entity by using pymem read u along long and our entity base plus i multiplied by 20 in hex. Remember our step between the entities were 20, therefore we skip 20. We will make a quick check that our pointer is valid and then also make sure that our entity is alive. We will read the entity health using the offset d0 from before, the health points, and if they are alive, meaning they have a value in between 1 and 100. It's not a safe proof way, but it's a simple way to check if they're alive. Now for the box, we will choose a red color. Take note that I make a error here that we will fix later. I forget the RGB part. Next up will be the 3D position of the entity. If we go back to Sheet Engine and look at one of the entity pointers, if we scroll down, we can see some familiar attributes or values down below. At 308, we can see three floats in a row that represent a vector. Now, from previous tutorials, we know that this is a position attribute, so we will just write the feet position as these coordinates. We can take the x offset or 308 and then just add four bytes for each value or the other axes. So we get, for example, the y axis, four bytes, the z axis, eight bytes. We will add an additional variable, head z, to artificial officially make a head position for our entity. We will take it or take the same value as the feet z position and then just add 64 on top of it. 64 units is sort of the height of a CS player. This will differ from game to game. If you want to make this better, you would actually use the head position, but we're lazy. So we'll just do with this instead. Before we can get the 2D positions, we will need to create our world to screen function. For this, we will go into our calculations file, import numpy, and then create the world to screen method. This function will take a view matrix, our 16 floats, a world position, pretty position, and then our window size. Now in this function, we will take the matrix, shape it to a numpy array, 4x4 matrix, then append our world position with a one value at the end. Take note that I make a typo here as well, so we will fix it later, but it shouldn't be 1,0, it should be 1.0. Now to transform our 3D position into our 2D screen space, we will first need to get the clip space. We do that by multiplying our matrix by our position. Think of the clip space as the transition zone between 3D space to 2D screen space. We project our coordinate using our projection matrix and we get values that are either outside or inside in our field of view or camera. Do keep in mind that this is the row major multiplication. If your game uses a column major type of matrix, you will have to use the transform function. Now to project these coordinates, we will first have to check if the entity is in front of us or on screen. We will do that by checking our depth variable w against 00, 0 or 0 0.001. If they are in front of us, we will normalize the coordinates we first get our normalized coordinates x and y by dividing each one of them by our w. We then get our width and height with our window size. Then at last we get our screen x and y by dividing our width by 2 and then add our width 
divided by 2 again, but multiplied with our normalized coordinates. Think of it as going from the middle towards the edges of the screen to create depth. For the y axis, we just use minus instead of plus, and that will return the coordinates. If the entity wasn't in front of us or off screen, we'll just return 0, 0. Now, when we're done with our world to screen function, we can read the bytes of our view matrix address. We create the view matrix with our struct.unpack and using the 16 float value. Then we just extract the feed coordinates or the 2D feed coordinates using our world to screen function and putting in our view matrix, world position, and our screen size. We will do the same for our head coordinates, but with our head z at the end of the function call, making it really easy to draw our rectangle later because we have two points, top and bottom. After that, we create the actual box. So we will get the height of the ESP rectangle by subtracting the head y coordinate with our feet coordinate. We get the width of the box by taking our height and dividing it by 2.5. If our feet coordinates are not 0, 0, meaning that they are on screen, we will add them to our entities list. We will add the values, but we will change the x coordinate a bit by subtracting the width divided by 2 to make sure that we're drawing from the left to right instead of from the middle. After that, we add our exception catch and we are ready to draw our entities, but we don't have that entity drawing functionality yet. We would have to populate our overlay. So just like before, we add some imports, then we create a class now, overlay class with a color key. This color key will work as the transparency factor. We will set the width and height of this window according to our computer screen, then set the mode according to our window size and using the PyCam no frame attribute. We will get the window using the VM info and at last we use the setup overlay using the pygametime.clock. Now when we have our window, we can start to add some transparency and click through availability. We will use get window long and set window long using our window, some win32con constant. We also don't want our overlay to move, so we will use set window pause with the no move and no resize argument. Then set the layer window attributes using some other constant. We can now create the refresh function using the pygam event handler. We will just draw everything as transparent. So for each frame, once we're done rendering our boxes, we will just clean it. We will create a draw box function using the screen coordinates and width height, etc. And finally, we use a display function so we can update the frame rate and such. Let's now import our overlay and finally draw our ESP boxes. We will set the overlay to our overlay class, but also import the correct overlay from, from our overlay file. Do not import the overlay from Pygame here, it will cause an error. We do need to get our correct view matrix address. Remember, we just have the one from the search or the scan results, not the actually aligned address. We can get it by taking the address that we got from the scan results and subtracting the base of the view matrix, or not the base, but the beginning where it aligns. This will give us the offset, which we can just subtract from our address, the main one, to get the correct view matrix address. Perfect, we have our view matrix base address. We can now render or refresh our overlay for each loop, and then draw each entity. We will loop through the entities, pick out each attribute, x, y, width, height, then our color, then clear our entities list so we don't just add on and add and add and add. Then update our display. You can set it to 60 FPS, you can set it to something higher if you want. Now we need to fix some errors that I made. I forgot to add the dot in calculations, very big error. Then I forgot the dot exe. I don't think this actually does anything, but still something. I did forget to use .rgb on the Win32 API in our color, so make sure to do that. And then we hit run. We can see that 
we now display boxes over our entities. Very beautiful. We can see them through boxes, through walls, we can shoot through them and kill them. Just beautiful. Amazing. So there you have it. Your very own ESP wall hack in Python. Enjoy. Now, if you want to draw your teammates as green or any other color than the enemies, so you can differentiate between them, you can just add the local player check. We look for our team, compare it to the enemy team, we change the color depending on the team, and the rest is the same. But now you will have green teammates and red enemies. Very beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the next video.